In this video, we are going to program a Caterpillar game. First, let me show you how Caterpillar works. The window opens up, you press the space bar, and you're this Caterpillar walking around the screen. Now, if you go outside the screen, it's game over. You see this little leaf right here? So the Caterpillar eats the leaf, and the moment he does, he grows just a little, and he gets a little bit faster and I got 10 points for eating the leaf. And so now, I'm gonna eat another leaf. Woohoo, I got a little bit longer, got a little bit faster, and here we go. So now the question is simply this. How many of these things can I eat before it's game over? Doo doo. Ooh, ooh. Oop, doo. Hey. Hey, not too bad. Wow, this is like the best game I've ever had. Woo, woo, oh no, oh no, I'm gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Yay! Yeah. I can't believe it. I've never. Ah! I got 110. Woohoo! Very good. And that's what we're going to do today. So don't start typing the code yet because I want to show you the flowchart. I want to talk about flowcharts. So this is called a flowchart. And a flowchart is a graph which gives a procedural step by step set of instructions so that I know how my program is going to flow. And so anything that's in a rectangle, in this case we're going to consider this a rectangle, the edges are rounded, but that's okay, it's a rounded rectangle. What you need to know about flowcharts is this. There's a lot to know about flowcharts, by the way, but this is a pretty straightforward one. So we're going to start with the basics. Anything that's in a rectangle or a rounded rectangle is just something that has to be done. It's just some step, some series of steps that has to be done. Anything that's a diamond is a decision that has to be made. So this diamond here represents a condition. And so a diamond is going to have two branches. It's going to have a yes branch and a no branch. And this is where our programs become a little bit more interesting is when we actually have branching opportunities. So the way this starts is <clears throat> we have to start the process, right? Our program has to start, so there's nothing more to, do, to say there than just start. Proceed to the next step. We're going to create and set up all the properties for our caterpillar, which by the way is going to be a form of turtle for turtle graphics, and even the leaf is going to be a form of turtle for turtle graphics. Then we're going to set up our starting values for variables. Where do things begin? Uh, where does the caterpillar start? What length does the caterpillar start? What speed does the caterpillar start? What's my size of the caterpillar? What's my beginning score? Most likely it's going to be zero. And then once I press the space bar, I move the caterpillar forward. And that's when I enter my first decision branch. Decision branch. Has the caterpillar reached the leaf? Well, that's either yes or no. Well, let's assume no first. Then the question is, has the caterpillar moved outside the screen? If yes, display game over, and then the game comes to an end. But if no, if I've managed to stay inside the screen, I follow this no branch back up to move the caterpillar forward, and then I re-enter the has the caterpillar reached the leaf. Now as long as I have not gone out of the screen, but I haven't eaten a leaf, what's going to happen is this is going to loop right here. This is going to go around and around and around. The moment I do get a leaf, I follow the yes branch, move the leaf, increase the speed and size of the caterpillar, and add to, to the score. We're going to add 10 points to the score. Then follow the branch into here. Has the caterpillar moved out the screen, outside the screen, yes or no? No, so branch all the way back up here, move the caterpillar forward. And so this is how the branches work. Once I've hit the point where the caterpillar is just too long or I've gone out of the screen, I follow the yes branch, voila, game over. And so that is the flowchart for our program. Here's the code for our program, <clears throat> but I want you to follow with me as we go through the video you are going to need to pause from time to time and so I'd like you to do that but what I want you to do right now is open up idle 
open up an editor window and then name your file caterpillar dot first name your first name not this <laughs> but your first name dot last name your last name dot py go ahead and pause the video and do that and then unpause the video <coughs> once you've done that okay now where do all these line numbers come from well if you have python 3.8 or higher i have 3.82 then actually under preferences on the Mac and actually you can do that in Windows 2 you go to general and then there's this beautiful little checkbox here show line numbers in new windows now if you have 3.7 or earlier you're not going to have that and so you have to rely on the lower right hand corner here where it tells you the line number and the column number okay having said that we're going to have to import the random module because uh, the leaf is going to appear on the screen randomly. And we're going to import the turtle, but we're going to rename our turtle module access as just T because it's simpler. Now, <clears throat> what you want to do is you're going to want to go down and create a section where you've got main program here. And so you're going to start with setting the background color. T.BG color is yellow caterpillar equals t.turtle that creates the turtle object called the caterpillar you're gonna make the shape a square you're gonna make your caterpillar red though you could make it something else yellow would be a bad choice because that's the background set the speed currently to zero pick the pen up because if your caterpillar starts moving the caterpillar is gonna start drawing and then here's something I learned. I should have probably known this a little bit earlier, but HT is another shorter version of hide turtle. So this will hide the caterpillar at the beginning. Go ahead and pause the video and type in those statements there. All right, <clears throat> now we're going to create our own shape for the leaf using ordered pairs. So leaf is also a turtle, so leaf equals t dot turtle. And here's something really cool. And actually, I remember being asked earlier in the year by a student, hey, can we create our own shapes for turtles? And at the time, I didn't know the answer. Well, it turns out the answer is yes. And so the leaf shape that was created is actually created by a series of ordered pairs. They connect all the ordered pairs. You get something that looks kind of like a leaf. So leaf shape is going to hold this list or this set of ordered pairs and then what we have to do is we have to register that shape into the turtle module and we're going to call that shape leaf using the ordered pairs in the variable leaf shape once you've registered your user created shape you can then say leaf dot shape is that name leaf set its color to green pick the pen up, hide the turtle, and then set the speed to zero. All right, let's keep going. Game started equals false, capital F. Text turtle, that's going to display the score. <coughs> and also, uh, no, this isn't going to display the score. This is going to display to the screen, press space to start or game over. <coughs> then I write, press space to start, align it to center, set the font, hide that turtle, and then, so that's as far as that goes. And then the score is also a turtle. Score underscore turtle equals t dot turtle. Score underscore turtle dot ht for hide turtle. Set its speed to zero. Now the only thing really moving on the screen will be the caterpillar itself. But the leaf will be jump, jumping randomly from some point to another point. Now, if you need to pause the video and write these out, you can. Don't start yet on the listeners, which is my line 122 down to 128. Don't do that yet. Because now what we're going to do is we're going to go back up and we're going to start creating our functions, our methods. And we've got several of them, so let's talk about them first. The first one is called outside window this controls what the outside of the window is considered to be and so it lets me register if I really have wandered outside the window or not 
Then there's the game over function, and that just initiates the game over procedures. There is the display score function that displays the score to the screen. There's the place leaf function, which is what's going to make the leaf hop around the screen once the caterpillar eats the leaf. And then this is the most in-depth one. This is the start game function. So this actually controls how the game starts. And inside of it is actually the loop that keeps the game running. Then we have to have four different functions which control movement of the caterpillar. And we'll talk about those in just a minute. So first, let's go to outside window. What's this going to be considered? Well, all right, let me go ahead and run the program again real quick. So here's my window, and it has a width and it has a height, obviously. And Python, the turtle graphics, is a little bit different from standard graphics in computer languages because where my cursor is right now, that's about 0, 0. And then everything to the left is negative on the x-axis. Everything above here is positive on the y-axis. And then below this point is negative on the y-axis. And then if that's 0, 0, then positive x goes this way. So the way we're going to define our window here is we're going to consider the left to be half the width and a negative number. Half the width and a negative number. We're going to consider the right to be half the width and a positive number. We're going to consider the top to be half the height and a positive number. And we're going to consider the bottom to be half the height and a negative number. So this follows the coordinate system that you learn in Algebras 1 and 2. So OK, let's look through the reasoning here. Define, define outside window, where left wall is the negative value of t dot window width cut in half. Right wall is t dot window width cut in half. Top wall is t dot window height cut in half. And bottom wall is negative t dot window height cut in half. Then I grab an ordered pair. I create a variable ordered pair x, y. And I grab the position of the caterpillar. And that's stored into the x and the y values. So now I'm going to figure out whether outside is true or false. So if the caterpillar's x value is smaller than the left wall, then I'm outside. Or if the caterpillar's x value is larger than the right wall, I'm outside the window. Or if the caterpillar's y value is less than the bottom wall, I'm outside the window. Or if the caterpillar's y value is larger than the top wall, I'm outside the window. So if any of these is true, then outside will be set to true. But if all of these are false, that means I'm still inside the window, and outside will be considered false. And so the function will return that to the main program. So this function, outside window, returns either a true or a false value, which tells me if my caterpillar is yes outside or no, it's still inside. This is how game over works. The caterpillar becomes yellow, so we basically set the caterpillar to the background. The leaf becomes yellow, so it's set to the background, so you can't see them anymore. Uh, we pick the pen up for the entire turtle module. We hide the turtle. And then we write to the screen, game over, align center, and then set the font. So that's the game over function. If you need to pause the video and write that out, or if you need to pause the video and write both of these out, go ahead and do that. Let's talk about display score. First, we clear out anything that was in there to begin with. So score underscore turtle equals dot clear. And then pick the pen up. Take the x value, set it to half the width of the window minus 50, because we won't need much space. And then the y score, half the window's height, minus 50. And then we set its position. So that's actually going to put the score up in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. Uh, Score.turtle.write, we write the current score, whatever the current score is, 
with a light uh, right alignment and there's the font and the size and the boldness that's display score place leaf this is how it works it's pretty simple first hide the leaf then set the X position totally random from negative 200 to 200 and then set the Y position of the leaf from totally random from negative 200 to 200 and then ST is shorthand for show the turtle again. So what it does is the leaf doesn't actually get eaten by the caterpillar. Obviously what we do is once the caterpillar is over the leaf, it hides the leaf, resets its position, and then shows the leaf. And that's the place leaf function. Okay, definition start game is the most in depth. So we have a global variable called game started which down here we set equal to false and then what we're going to do here is if game started return so if the game has not started just return which means exit this method entirely just hop out if game started equals true or game started equals true other than that score equals zero clear out the turtle the text turtle set the caterpillar speed to 2, set the initial caterpillar length to 3. Now what this does, this line right here, line 57, is each time the caterpillar eats a leaf it's going to get a little bit longer. So what it does is it multiplies the width by 1, which means the width won't change at all, period. But then it multiplies the length by the new caterpillar length. So whatever the length of the caterpillar is, once it eats the leaf, if it becomes 4, the length of the caterpillar becomes 4. And then this value, I'm going to be honest, I don't know what that does. We need a 1 there. Show the caterpillar. There it is. Display the score. Place the leaf on the screen. Now we're ready to play the game. While true, push the caterpillar forward by its speed factor, which starts at what? Speed factor starts at 2. Now if the caterpillar's distance from the leaf is less than 20, which is 20 pixels, we're going to consider that to be the caterpillar has successfully eaten the leaf. Which means we replace the leaf somewhere else. We bump up the caterpillar length, that's line 66. We then increase its size, so line 66 only changes the variable. It doesn't actually change the caterpillar itself. It's not until line 67 that we use our updated length to actually change the caterpillar, caterpillar visually. There we go. And we up the speed by a notch of 1. Up the score by 10 and then display that new score. But if we're outside of the window, then we're going to run the game over function, and then we break out of the while loop, and it's game over. And then this loop just keeps on going until, eventually, you're outside the window, and it's game over. All right, last part. Moving upwards is this. Now remember, a heading of 0 means you're traveling east. A heading of 90 means you're traveling north. A heading of 180 means you're traveling west, and a heading of 270 means you're traveling south. How many degrees are in a circle? 360. So this is how headings work. Now, if the heading, if the caterpillar is going east or west and you want to move up, then set the new heading to north, which is 90. For the move down, if you're traveling east or west, then set it to 270, which is south. Now notice you can't move the caterpillar south if you're already going north. That's important. The caterpillar can't overlap on top of himself. So our code won't allow it to do that. Moving left, which means if you want to move left, then if the caterpillar is traveling north or south, go ahead and set it to left, which is 180. If you want to move right, 
then check the if condition. If you're traveling north or south, then set it to right. So if you're traveling north, you have to choose either east or west. If you're traveling south, you have to choose either east or west. So you can't go from one vertical direction directly to the opposite vertical direction. And the same way east and west. If you're traveling east, you just can't flip-flop to the west instantaneously. So that's the way the code's working. All right, go ahead and pause the video and then run that. Or not run it, but just go and pause the video and record that. And then if you copied everything else down here, now we're ready to set up our listener keys. So this is where we set up the keyboard to start listening. So t.onkey, we're going to run the start game method, no parentheses there. And we're going to be listening for the space bar. t.onkey move up when the keyboard, when the program hears the up key pressed. t.onkey run the move right function when the keyboard has the right arrow pressed. T dot on key move down when the keyboard hears the down key pressed. T dot on key move left when it hears the left arrow pressed. And then this right here, T dot listen, simply means this is when it starts listening. So this just sets the different keys, lines 123 through 127, just sets up the functions that will run when a certain key is pressed. But this line, 128, actually starts the listener. And then we start the main loop, t dot main loop. And that is the code. <clears throat> and hopefully, you've been pausing the video and typing out as we've been going along here. And now you're going to get something like this. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's pretty good. Hey. Do, 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 do. Getting faster. Oh. There we go. There we go. He ate it. Oh, I don't want to die. <laughs> I'm just a caterpillar. I want to live. Ah! God bless you, wherever you are today.